Photographers are like kindergarten teachers. They scare children. They eat lunch out of paper bags. They're always wet. Doesn't mean I'm not gonna help 10 of them if they ask for help. What kind of monster would I be then? All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. Huh? Wow. Welcome to the cinema. Special effects brought to us by Pixar Studios. I don't need you anymore, Yasar. Leave us alone. Okay, first question. Sony A6400 with 70 to 350 for wildlife video only. Is it good, especially HD 120p? Unfortunately, back then, those Sony generations, A6000, they had terrible 1080p for some reason. They just amazing, oversampled, sharp 4K. But then 1080p is like, oh, you need that too? For some reason, it's like line skipped, pixel binned. This isn't even close to pointing at me. Audio. I imagine you could get some footage, but that would not be something you shoot for. That, that would suck your setup. You suck. So do we think the S52X will do what the S52 doesn't? Barely. It's barely even noticeable, the differences. It's utterly confusing. I don't understand why they released those two separate cameras. I get it. Like, it makes sense where if you don't need the certain codecs, you buy the cheaper one and you don't have to pay for it. Or you could pay for the upgrade in that camera if you want, except some things like SSD recording, I think. I don't know. I would 100% go for the S5 II. I would not care about the all eye. They're still not autofocusing in 180p anyway, so what's the diff? I think I prefer the look of the original. My favorite looking cameras are the Lumix with the white lettering and the little red accents. I love that. So this whole darkened black death vibe of Satan. No thanks. What I'm waiting for is the S2H or the GH6S with phase detect and a lower megapixel, bigger sensor. Cause you know how it is. The GH5S had a slightly bigger sensor than the GH5, but no Ibis. I could get by with no Ibis maybe for wildlife. Lens stay super slow-mo, I could do it. I might be on board if it has like 4K 240p and all the stuff that I need. Yeah, have some coins. They're Canadian, sorry. I have a GH6, should I sell it and all my lenses to buy a Sony a7S III and highly priced G Masters? Are you looking for a divorce? Cause that's what's headed your way. I'm already heavy invested in Micro Four Thirds lenses, including many of the best ones. I value their small size, not a pro. Why? Like it's on par, the system, same almost. GH6 has better stabe, better colors, better filmic look. Sony is digital, horse meat, just like nice dynamic range, like you'll ever use it. Just dynamic range boost, you're good to go. I might sell the GH6 though, I did. Just cause I think something newer is gonna come with phase detect, but it probably won't for many years that beats the GH6. So I could run my whole shit on the GH6. I want it back. Give it back, you scammer. Is the Sony a7S III just that incredible in low light, high ISOs? Or is that possible with all full frame cameras? I am but a humble G85 user. So I think he's talking about my night vlog where I'm at like ISO 80,000 roughly the whole thing. And it was totally usable. It's not like it was super inspiring to look at, but most cameras would not be able to do that. It was almost pitch black and Sony a7S III is a special beast that can see in the dark, but I find most cameras can compete with it up to 12,800. I found that S5 II was actually cleaner at 12,800. That's scary. And all the way up to it as well. It's just only when you're entering into like 50,000, 80,000, 
and Sony can still autofocus. Like that's what I want to show you here. I did a little clip. We got the Canon EOS R on the left, Sony A7S III on the right, and Canon just cannot autofocus in low light. And that's like, it was actually cleaner. I was looking at it like, what the hell is this? But then it couldn't autofocus. I was like, oh, come on, man. Whereas Sony's perfect all the way up to like 102,000. And we just see it as normal. That's not normal at all. Like Canon will struggle every camera company. It's like, once you get into these high ISOs, it's almost unusable. Now I locked off into manual focus and then I switch into 12,800. Boom, bam. So now the Sony, little cleaner, little noticeably cleaner, but like most full frame cameras are gonna look pretty good anyway. Still better colors on the Canon. So it's like, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do with your life? So the story goes, most full frame cameras are great in low light, but Sony takes it a notch into the extreme that you'll probably never even need. I thought this was video centric. That's why I bought it. Not because it was so good in low light, the dumbest thing. I find it gets soft at 12,800, whereas the others don't. But the noise is so well controlled at the higher ones, it's freaky. Help me here. A7 IV versus S5 II for YouTube talking head in a studio, casual vlogging, and maybe a bit, no, I'm not reading that. If it was me, just doing this, studio and vlogging, that is a tough one actually, because Panasonic, it will have better colors. I will appreciate the look in here. If I go vlogging, 1000% way better stabilization. It's like, wow, so much better. Autofocus, good enough. But the slow-mo is what gets my heart. I gotta go into manual focus. We're tweaking, peeking on, boom. Not tweaking, I don't tweak. Am I in focus? I don't know. Let's run across the street. Oh, it was okay. The real question is what lens are you gonna get? And Sony has way more options with 3D pop because we know the Sigma lineup, they overdo the elements for like corner sharpness. Well, I do find corner sharpness to be one of the most important specs of a lens. I agree with him. I feel that they lack in 3D pop where I don't with a Zeiss Batis. I love the simple low element counts. That new Sigma, freaking 50mm 1.4 has 14 elements. My Zeiss Batis? 14 elements. Seven. And it's superior in every way. Yeah. So if you want to go native lenses, I don't know, man. This is a sweet lens. Zeiss Batis 25mm Tony 2. Panasonic has a 24mm 1.8. It was okay. I didn't see any 3D pop on it. I don't know. The 20 to 60 is a fun little vlogging lens. It's pretty light. A little range on that. Yeah. I don't know what I would choose, neither. I question to you, what are the things you want to see in the A7S IV? A firmware policy, number one, you dicks. Uh, just the A7S II, jumping to the A7S III was a monumental leap for mankind. So I demand the same. I want HD 480p, 4K 240p, better noise at lower ISOs, enough of this shit, make this a video centric camera because that's what it is, it's low megapixel already, nobody's taking photos with this piece of shit. So 16 by 9 aspect ratio now, 10 megapixels, the ultimate 4K, wow, can't wait for that. New color science, just for once. Sony lead the industry. Imagine that one day. Some people like it. What the hell is this? Come on, man. Right now I'm using, somebody left a comment and they said, this guy made Cine Lutz for Sony. It's the guy, that director from the Transformers or something. So I looked through, it's all free. I'll leave a link down below if I remember to do it, if I could even find it again, probably can't. And so that's what I've been doing. I don't see much of a difference. Still Sony. So Sony bullshit. So nice color science for once and a more filmic look instead of being so digital and harsh.
Sony's always the sharpest. You do a side-by-side. -side. I think they like that, but I don't. My face doesn't, that's for sure. How about raw, inside? Wouldn't mind it. You could do it with that new sensor. x -trans. I already mentioned the 16 by nine. Just give me the camera or a firmware update to add everything I said into this one. You could do it. S5 II with the EF to L adapter and put EFS lens for that 4K 60 frame per second crop. Listen, chicken dick. That's a one use case scenario. You buy your lens, okay, the crop, cool. I'm gonna go to another mode. Oh no, this stupid APS-C lens doesn't do anything. It's a circle. It's only a circle. Help, someone get me out of here. Listen, rat boy. No, stupid idea. Apparently the EF lenses autofocus pretty well on the Panasonic. So you could get some full frame. I wish I had the adapter while I had that S5 II. I could have used my 24 mil 1.4 on that thing. Oh boy. And if the stave works, you could have some things, but those are old DSLR lenses. Like the telephoto ones, those are so heavy. Stupid. Like for this or vlogging, okay. But for anything you're thinking of, you should be thrown in prison. Dude. The XH2 has firmware for everything 3 update. It has the world feeding on the fucking AI. You sold the wrong camera. You sold the Fuge. Buy back the Fuge. You never tried the damn thing in your life. You probably don't own one Fuji item. That firmware, not one damn person yet, has tested the damn thing for animal eye detect, autofocus, in video, 4K 120p. The reason I sold the Fuji X-H2S was not just because of the autofocus. The animal eye detect was terrible, much less reliable than the GH6. Let that sink in. But I could manually focus. The image looked nice, except 240p was more noisy and elongated stretch patterns, completely unusable. It was overpriced for what it was. Awkward things with the dials on the left side. Like it's just not, it's Fuji weirdness. Nice look. It's a nice look. I may have had some tests with the X-H2 recently. And I gotta tell you, like I like the look of it. And I will review the footage we did as a separate video. But Fuji, this new firmware, I haven't seen one damn person do it in video. And the 240p is shit. That's the thing I hate most about the camera industry. It's mostly photographers reviewing cameras for photography. And I just want some slow motion fun. Just let me have some fun, man. Whenever I go to a review, I gotta weed through the piles of horse shit to get to somebody who also does video. And same on my part. People just wanna see the photo quality. I'm doing only video here in 1080p usually. And they're like, what the hell is this? Oh God, this guy sucks. Why do I keep watching him? Oh, unliked, unsubbed. I'll sub again, unsubbed. I hate him. Question for the next Q and A. Could the S5 II become your new wildlife camera? What are the pros and cons? The con is they have not one lens. There's the con. You seem to enjoy it quite a lot. And the colors look nicer than the A7S III. How dare you remind us? Yeah, it would be nice. I had a lot of fun with the 70 to 200 at the farm, but everything was right there with me. It's like, you could have used anything for that. I literally did. I used my 24 mil prime and got some nice footage. Like when I'm out for hikes though, I need tiny birds far away. It's like, okay, they have nothing. 300 mil and I'm not convinced that those Sigmas are even worth our time. So many people keep bringing up the 60 to 600. Are you lost in the wilderness? Who would ever use that thing? It's heavier than my Sony lens. The super zoom range means it's compromised in every area. Zero 3D pop, heavy as hell. Sync stabe, I don't know. I've never seen an example. I've only ever seen one example of a guy with the S5 and the 150 to 600 Sigma lens and it was shaky as shit, unusable in video. 
Everyone else is reviewing it for photography. I don't care. Anything is good for photography. You want video handheld? I doubt that Sigma's doing a damn thing for us. All right, last question. Have you ever considered an older FS5, SF5 by 2? SF5 by 2. SF5 by 2. Viewfinder, great ergonomics. 8 megapixel Sony APS-C sensor up to 960 frames per second burst. Although not full HD anymore, best color science you can get out of an E-mount system. Is that confirmed? I doubt it. Not really great for vlogging though. I have looked into it. That firmware update is a paid firmware update to get that super slow-mo by the way. And I don't know if it's even available anymore. I would like to test it because I do have that lens. Boom, I'm out there somehow using that thing. I don't know, it sounds pricey. I doubt the color science is as good as you say it is. But 960 frames, usually Sony's 960 frames per second is trash. Probably unusable, but it also has 480, which looks slightly better. I'd like to try it. Do you have one? Does anybody have one? Who's sending it? We learned a lot today. How was the audio, by the way? I got one complaint from one guy saying, your videos are always quieter than everyone else's. It's so annoying. What the hell is your problem? And I was like, I always level everything to like minus one dB. Like how could it possibly be quiet? And then I looked into this rabbit hole that was like, Da Vinci has all these loudness settings and then there's this rendering thing and you want to be at minus 14 luffs, freaking luffs. And so like I did a bunch of tweaks, my friend sent me a tutorial and that's what we've done. It may sound a little compressed cause I don't, I made some weird changes and decisions in the boardroom, but here we have audio and it's different. It's louder, not necessarily better, but it could be somewhat listenable. I'm gonna leave. Are you buying stuff through the affiliate link shop or a camera conspiracies t-shirt? for a loved one near you. Subscribe to my website.